everybody, and congratulations. You have made it through the entire course, uh, and you now know everything you should need to know for your IGCSE exam on waves. Um, so congratulations for getting this far. What we're going to focus on uh, in this final lecture is the idea of virtual images. Um, so you need to be able to be confident uh, with drawing ray diagrams for images forming a virtual image. And if you remember, a virtual image is one that appears to be inside the lens. Uh, so there are two main, uh, or three main ways that you might uh, come across this. Uh, the first is diverging lenses and magnifying glasses. Uh, and those are probably the most common uh, examples that you might come across, um, but you should also be confident with the idea of how to do them for mirrors, which is a little bit uh, trickier at times, but not too much. Um, and you should be able, also be able to uh, explain how we can form virtual images uh, from real images. Okay, so a few uh, little recaps for you. First of all, you should get the idea that an image is formed when all the light rays from one point and object all converge on one single other point. And we have two types. We have virtual images that appear inside the lens or inside the object. Now, you can't project a virtual image. Uh, so that might immediately start you to think, well, how do we see it then? Um, and what you need to remember is that with a virtual image, you have an object here um, that will appear to be, say, inside your lens, um, but your eye over here, this is your eyeball, um, what happens is the light from there has to somehow end up forming a new image uh, on the back of your eyeball, so it will all come to a single point inside your eye. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the lesson. It's not necessary for your IGCSE, but I think it is interesting, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, real images appear on the opposite side of the lens to the object, and they can be projected. So actually, this virtual image is always kind of an intermediate point that we go through. Um, and you also need to remember to talk about the attitude of an image, so whether they are upright or inverted. Uh, inverted means they're upside down, upright means they're the correct way up. So, um, I just want you to think a little bit about how we can draw some images. Um, so, here I've got a, a little picture of a classic uh, converging lens. Um, but what I didn't actually go through in my last video was how to create the ray diagrams for this one. Uh, so, same as we've seen in previous times, um, I have my object over here, uh, and what I want to do is to show where the image is going to be formed. Now, you don't actually have to remember where the object needs to be in order to work out what the image is going to be formed looks like. All you need to do is follow the rules that I've taught you so far. So if you remember the first ray that we always draw is one that's going to go uh, parallel to my optical or principal axis, so it's going to go like this. Uh, and once it's met the plane of my lens, we know that any ray that comes in along um, parallel to the principal axis, that's going to be diverged down to go through the focal point. So I'm going to draw my ray going off like that. If you remember, I told you that the second thing that you can draw is a ray that goes straight through the center of the lens, um, and that one will always be a straight line. So any ray that goes straight through the center doesn't diverge at all. So it's going to look like this. And you might look at this and go, OMG, what am I going to do? Look, these two seem to be getting further apart as we go along, not close together, so how am I going to fix this? Well, it's actually pretty simple, but what we're going to do is create a virtual image. So a virtual image is one that appears to be inside the lens. So I'm going to draw or extend these lines back. And I don't know how far I'm going to need to extend them for, so I'm just going to make them pretty long. Um, and again, I just line up my ruler along my other line, and again, I just extend them back. 
Again, not the easiest thing in the world to do on a laptop screen, but I hope that you're going to do it way more accurately. Now, a virtual image is formed in the same way as in other times where the two rays cross. So that's going to be my virtual image. Now, what I've shown here is the idea of a magnifying glass. In a magnifying glass, I'm actually seeing the image um, inside it. So my eye would be somewhere over here. Can I draw an eye? Sort of, yeah, that would be my eye over here. Let's make it a, a blue eye. No, okay, no, blue eye, please. Blue eye. Uh, so there's my eye over here, and that's viewing the image inside. Now, like I said earlier, um, these light rays are diverging out, so I'm going to have to do some more optical stuff to bend that light back in to form an image on the back of my eye, so I'll get a little uh, inverted image there, but we're not going to worry about that for this video. The key thing is this bit here. It's this virtual image that is formed inside the light ray. Sorry, uh, inside the lens. Um, and if we remember to always sort our image, so this one is magnified. Remember, if you can't remember salted, uh, look back on my last video because it is important that you can do this. Uh, this one is upright. Uh, it is uh, on the same side of the lens um, as the object. And this time it is a virtual image. Always sort every image, it just helps to get it right. Okay, so that's magnifying glasses. That's probably the most common uh, type of uh, diagram you might be asked to do when drawing a virtual image. This is the second one. Um, if you wear glasses um, and you are under the age of about 40, chances are you probably wear glasses that look like this. So, as we know from the shape and from our previous lessons, this is a converging lens. Um, so what are we going to do with our converging lens? Well, same rules as before. The first thing I'm going to do is a light ray that comes straight from my object and hits my, my diverging lens. Sorry, diverging lens. Let's uh, change that to diverging while I'm here. So what's this one going to do? Well, you should remember that a diverging lens produces a light ray that travels outwards and we know where it goes by tracing back, like I've drawn with my ruler here, tracing back through the focal point. So it's a virtual focal point this time, or a focal point that's on the same side. So it's slightly different to uh, diverging lenses, sorry, converging lenses, get the right in the end. And exactly the same principle as all my others, I'm going to draw a second little uh, ray that goes from the object. And like anything that goes through with lenses, it's going to go straight through the centre. Now you might think, well, what am I going to do? Exactly the same principle again as what I did in the previous one. I'm going to now extend back my two rays. Obviously, if I extend back the ray here, um, it's the same ray, so that will extend back from there, just back along the same path. And what that tells me is, again, where they cross, same as for every one of these, it's always where they cross, is where the image is formed. So again, if I was to salt it, uh, this time the size is diminished because it's smaller than it was. It is upright though. Uh, it is on the same side of the lens as the object. And uh, it is a virtual image. Now you might be wondering, um, and I would, if this is a pair of glasses lenses here, um, your light rays seem to be really, really far away uh, from where your eye is. So your eye would kind of have to be uh, covering a whole massive area sort of um, over here, covering the whole thing. Um, but again, I'll talk about that a little bit more in our lesson uh, when we get on to that. Um, but the key thing is you would see the image to be slightly smaller.
And if you do wear glasses, this will explain why, when you get new glasses, you always feel like you're going to fall down the stairs. Uh, because diverging lenses, they make everything seem smaller when you view the world through them. So that's why the stronger your glasses, the smaller everything looks. It's not actually the purpose of glasses, you don't want them to make things look smaller, but it's, uh, it's a side effect of it. And again, I'll try and talk about that a little bit more in the lesson. Last type of ray diagram that you may be asked to draw, and this is for a mirror. Um, mirrors are particularly tricky because, I don't know, I, I always have a mental block about them. So um, make sure you study this one carefully and again, learn the technique. Now, the trick for doing it with mirrors is to pick two points on your mirror. So I should say, um, here's my object and I'm viewing it somewhere over here. Um, and obviously this is the mirror over here label it as well for you. So how do I know where to draw it? So I've picked two random points and from your two random points on the mirror, and they can be anywhere on the mirror provided that they are between the object and where your eye is, I'm just going to draw in some normals. There's normal one and there's normal two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the path of a light ray going from my object to the normal. Now it's really important that you always pick the same point. So in this case, I'm going to pick the top of my tree as where the light's coming from. So it's coming in like that. Um, and you can see that this is uh, this uh, number measured here on the ruler, uh, that is uh, measured relative to zero degrees being horizontal. So the angle of incidence in that case uh, will be, ooh, excuse me, uh, the angle of incidence in this case uh, will be uh, 40 degrees. So I need to, <coughs> excuse me, I need to measure another angle at 40 degrees. Again, it says 50, but that's because it's measuring it from the uh, horizontal, which I don't want. So that would be the same angle. So that's uh, from one of them. Now I do exactly the same thing from the second. I'm going to use a different colour here just to make it uh, clear that this is a different ray. What's going to show up well on my screen? Let's see how the green looks. Uh, yeah, you can see the green quite well. Let's use green. This is coming at 31 degrees to that, so that's going to be uh, 59. So, yep, it's at 59 degrees. Sorry for the quick maths. Um, and it's going to leave at the same angle again. So it's going to do something like that. So those are my two rays. And again, hopefully now this is starting to ring a bell after uh, seeing this done twice already. We can see that uh, these two areas are, or these two rays, they're never going to cross on the mirror side of the image. So I must be forming a virtual image instead. So what I'm going to do is extend these lines back in exactly the same principle as last time. Back they go, like that. I don't know how far to do it, so it's always worth doing them pretty far um, just to make sure that everything makes sense and it's going to work. There's one. There's the extension of the other one. Do, 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 do. And, hey, look at that. That's going to be the top of my tree. And that's where the image is going to fall. So, it depends on uh, how they want you to draw it, um, but that's how you can work out uh, where the image is. So, um, a few things again to remember. Uh, in this case, uh, this is going to be the same size. Um, and it's a bit difficult to prove why it's the same size, so just trust me on this. Um, this is laterally inverted. That basically means that right becomes left and left becomes right. Um, it is uh, uh, opposite side of the mirror to the object. 
uh, and it's a virtual image as well. Now that's all that can be a little bit confusing. Um, so the other method that you can use to find out where to draw your virtual image, um, and it's, it feels like a bit of a cheat, but it does work, um, is to say that the virtual image will be on the same line as the object. So it'll be somewhere along, ooh, let's try and get it in the right place. It'll be somewhere along this line here, and it will be the same distance. So looking at uh, my ruler on here, um, if I say that's what's that, uh, hold still. Can I pinch this? No, I can't, but we'll have to try that. Um, so that's about, and again, I can't quite get it to line up exactly how I want to, but it's about what's that? One, two, three, about three divisions away. So my image will also be exactly the same distance away. Um, and that's the other way that you are totally allowed to uh, draw images in the mirror. But, you know, this way it looks more complicated, so maybe it's better. Who knows? Um, but something that I think is potentially useful to know. They, you don't tend to get examined on that very often, but it's, it's a useful thing to know. Okay, so quite a lot to uh, take in in this one. I hope that... Uh, you feel that that was uh, useful to you. If you do have any questions, then as always, please come and chat to me in the lesson. I'm more than happy to go through anything you need. And in fact, I expect you to come with any questions. But huge congratulations, you have finished Waves. Um, and in our lesson, we'll be talking a little bit more now about uh, some of the more exciting things that we can do with Waves, like how glasses work, how vision works, but none of that is necessary for your exam. So you've done the hard work. Well done.